During the holy month of Ramadan, Muslims observe a strict fast from sunrise to sunset. Food still forms an integral part of Ramadan, with meals being enjoyed after sunset and before dawn. And this week, Yudhika's menu is inspired by some dishes for breaking the fast. The fasting month of Ramadan takes me back to my childhood in Durban. We were introduced to Islamic culture and tradition. But not only that, we also participated in the feasting. I'm sharing some of my favorite Ramadan recipes with you today. Nihari Gosh going with naan bread rolls and for dessert, a pistachio and coconut soji. The lamb does take a lot longer to cook, so I'm going to start with that first. Sunflower oil into the pan. And I've already preheated this pan. Sliced onion going in. And we're going to let this fry. This is real comfort food. I had a neighbor in Isapingo that used to make this. She used to cook it pretty early in the day and leave it simmering all day long. And the aromas used to drive us crazy. The onions are ready. Nihar means day. And Nihari Gosht is named because it takes all day to cook and your patience will be rewarded. And I am using lamb shank for this recipe. Seal the lamb in the hot pan. You don't have to change the pan for this, just use the same one. Once the lamb is golden brown, turn it over. I quite like this deep golden color. And remember, this is an important step when making this dish. Sealing the lamb keeps the meat tender. I make a special spice mix for the Nihari Gosh, and for that we have cinnamon stick, cloves, we also have some cumin seeds, coriander seeds, black pepper, nutmeg, fennel and cardamom. And I've combined those spices and ground them quite, doesn't have to be too fine, but sort of a medium spice mix. You can see little bits of cardamom in there. I think we're just about to re ready to add spices. Two tablespoons of red chili going in on the side of the pan. This prevents it from burning. That lovely spice mix I prepared earlier. Brown onion. And ginger and garlic paste. Mix that in. Lightly heat through for a few seconds. Pour in some boiled water. So about three cups. I think I'm going to be making the neighbors quite hungry today. These aromas are pretty special. Lower the heat and let this simmer for about five hours. The meat should fall off the bone. Reduce the heat, cover the pan with a tight-fitting lid and leave this to simmer. This is another one of my Durban favorites, naan bread. I'm making them into rolls, it's easier to serve. First ingredient, cake flour. And to that, 10 grams of dried yeast, a pinch of fennel seeds, a teaspoon of fine salt, it's about five cups of cake flour here, sugar, my secret ingredient to this milk powder. Work the ingredients together just to incorporate. Gradually add evaporated milk and then warm water. Keep working the dough for about five minutes until it's smooth and elastic. It looks like quite a sticky dough. It does take a bit of time to bring it together. And now, melted butter going in. To get the dough off your fingers, dip them into a bit of flour and just rub them off. It does take a bit of time for the melted butter to be absorbed into this dough. It's a bit squishy still. Let's take a look. Just dip your fingers into some flour. Makes the dough easier to work with as well. You don't want it too dry. Scraping the dough from the bowl. And 
And now grease the bowl with some non-stick spray. You can also do this wearing a shower cap so it doesn't get into your hair. Pop the dough in, cover this with cling film and let it rest until it doubles in size. I've made one already. And here it is. Whenever I see this, I can't resist the urge, but I have to do that. <laughs> see, the dough is quite easy to get out the bowl. Press that dough down. It's called knocking it back. Press out all the air and let's divide this into portions. Say about 16. I've got a hungry family. First in half, then into quarters, and then each portion into four pieces. Roll each portion or each piece into a ball and pop that into a pie dish. Naan bread is the perfect accompaniment for a comforting lamb dish. Cover this with cling film and leave it to rest until the buns double in size. The lamb's been simmering for a while. Let's have a look. And that's already coming quite easily off the bone as you can see. You can serve this on the bone or remove the bone. Finishing touches on this dish. Some cold water going into a little bowl. Add a tablespoon of flour. Mix those ingredients together and make sure there aren't any lumps in this. Some melted butter or butter ghee into the flour and water. Pour that into the sauce. Just work that in. The gravy starts to thicken up almost immediately. Let that bubble up. It cooks the flour and prevents you from getting that raw flour taste in your dish. That's pretty much done. We can garnish just before serving. Let that simmer for about five minutes. Starting out with the soji. And for that, I'm gonna heat up a pan. We've got a cinnamon stick and semolina going in. This is gonna take a bit of time while that's toasting and heating up. I'm gonna finish up on the naan rolls. They've doubled in size. Remove the plastic wrap. I've got some warm water here. And a brush. Gently dab some water over the top. Don't press down too hard. You don't want to deflate these buns. Sesame seeds. You can use poppy seeds for this as well. That's done. This goes into a preheated oven, 190 degrees Celsius, for about 20 minutes or until the buns are golden brown. Back to the soji. Let's check how warm that is. Semolina's hot. Now butter. I haven't made an error with this recipe. It really is 200 grams of butter with 175 grams of semolina. Now water. Gently stir that in. Coconut milk. Dessert cream. Evaporated milk. Reduce the heat if it starts to bubble too much. Be careful, you can get quite a nasty burn. A touch of food coloring going in. Playing along with that pistachio theme. This shouldn't take you more than 10 minutes to cook and it's a great treat, especially around tea time when you have those surprise guests. Condensed milk. And sugar. Gently work that together. This is a slight variation to the traditional soji. Normally I just use milk instead of coconut milk. And you can easily make it a traditional soji with a touch of saffron, full cream milk instead of the coconut. How long to cook it? Just wait for it to come together. Dry up slightly. I can see the oil slightly separate from the soji, which means it's ready. Now some ground cardamom going on top, about a teaspoon. This is freshly ground cardamom from our kitchen here. To garnish, grated coconut. And lastly to garnish, roasted pistachios. The 
this looks delicious. And that's our soji done. Last bits of garnish going on top of the lamb. Let's have a look at the bread rolls. They look amazing. Now while these rolls are still hot, brush them with some melted butter. You could also flavour this butter with some garlic and chopped coriander. A tip for you at home when you're making this, cover the bread once it's baked with a tea towel and that keeps the bread soft. I'm ready to serve. We've got freshly baked naan rolls going with Nihari Gosht and for dessert, a decadent pistachio and coconut soji. Food has the amazing ability to make us travel back in time and that's what this meal has done for me. I wish everyone a blessed Ramadan.